Hi everybody, Dr. Matt and Dr. Mike here answering your COVID vaccine questions. Today's question is, were the COVID vaccines rushed? And if so, is this a problem? Let me jump in there, guys. It's amazing how fast these vaccines have been developed. And a lot of people have asked why. Does it mean corners were cut? Now, the reality is that the technologies that are behind these new vaccines, brand new, amazing technologies, these were already in development well before the coronavirus pandemic. In fact, many years before. And the scientists were able to take the genetic material from the virus as soon as it had been sequenced, slotted in to these uh, new vaccine technologies and start those clinical trials really early. Uh, that meant that we've been able to uh, look at the results of those trials in record time and of course roll these vaccines out to the world uh, faster than it's ever been done before. Here in Australia, our regulator chose not to apply an emergency authorisation. They actually put the vaccines through a full assessment process, just the same as any other vaccine would normally go through. They were able to speed it up a little by doing some of the tasks uh, at the same time rather than one by one. And at the end of the day, the approvals came through a little later than in some other countries, but it was a full approval, meaning Australians can be completely confident in the safety and the eff efficacy of these vaccines. Back to you, Dr. Matt. So before a medical intervention, a drug or a medical device is available to the general public, it must first go through a rigorous process which has multiple stages to it. And this is essentially to test whether the device, the drug, intervention is safe, but it's also effective. So let's talk about the clinical trials of the COVID vaccines. So there's three phases to a clinical trial, and there's also a preclinical phase that goes before those three phases. So for the preclinical phase, we're testing the vaccine in a lab. So we're testing it on cells and animals. Then we can move on to phase one. In phase one, we test the safety but we also test the side effects. And we look at this in a small group of healthy people, around about 30 to 50. In phase two, we look at the safety, but also the dosage of the vaccine. So how much do we take and when do we take it? And then in phase three, again, we look at safety. So safety all the way through, but also at efficacy. So how effective is this vaccine at staving off the disease? Now we look at this in thousands of participants where half of these participants will get a placebo so they're the control and the other half get the vaccine. So how long would these three phases take? So on average, it takes around about 10 years. Now it doesn't take 10 years because we need to gather 10 years worth of data. It takes 10 years because there's a multitude of barriers in the road that make it take this long. Okay, let me explain these barriers. So Mike and I do re research in spinal cord injury. We've currently just finished the preclinical work. So this took us six years. Why did it take six years? Well, here are the barriers. Firstly, we need money. Where do we get money from? Well, we apply for grants, governments, philanthropic organizations, charitable organizations. Then we need to have researchers. Typically, a lab only has a few researchers, so the science does take time. And then finally, once we've got the results, we need to send it out to the experts. So out into journals, they need to review it, and then they send back their evaluation. And again, this takes maybe a year. So all these things, six years, that's just for the preclinical work. Then we go to the phase one. All these things repeat, more money, more researchers, more evaluation. And then on to phase two, on to phase three. And this is why it takes on average 10 years, if not more. Yeah, so if we focus on the COVID vaccine specifically, a couple of points that have been raised are the platforms. So the platforms we use, let's just say for Pfizer and AstraZeneca, for example, a lot of people think that when COVID-19 occurred, that we suddenly made these platforms overnight. But in actual fact, these platforms were created well before COVID-19 and had been previously tested. When it comes to money that Matt was talking about, which is often limited, this virus was affecting people all over the world. So governments were willing to write a blank check. So money wasn't an issue. When it came to researchers, we could get as many researchers as we needed, but also the best immunologists and virologists around the world to work on this vaccine. When it comes to publishing, the publishers were told to expedite their evaluation of the research so that they could publish it quickly and that researchers had access to the evidence. So again, they could really push through or expedite the vaccine trials. Now, another point to make is that in the phase three aspect, we need thousands of participants here. Now, the great thing is for Pfizer, we had 43,000 participants, which is huge. You don't usually get that many for a vaccine trial. The other thing is for many vaccine trials, you need to give half the vaccine, half 
the control and then send them out into the community and wait years so that you're confident that they've been exposed to the virus. For SARS-CoV-2, the virus was everywhere, so you didn't have to wait so long. We had a large number of participants and the virus was everywhere, so we were confident in the results. So in Australia, the TGA had the luxury to look at the results of the clinical trials both in the Pfizer and their AstraZeneca, but also the rolling data from the US, the UK and Israel, which were millions and millions of people, and they were able to see clearly the safety and efficacy. So going back to the question, was it rushed? So the science wasn't rushed, but the bureaucracy was expedited. And is this a bad thing? Not at all. 